Let us continue. As I mentioned at the end of the last video, in this one we're going to handle the network parameters of your coin. The first thing that we're going to do is change out the ports. Now there are two ports we need to worry about. There's the RPC port and peer-to-peer -peer port. Uh, the RPC port is usually used by other programs to talk to your coin. Most notably, uh, miners use it to submit mining data. And then there's the peer-to-peer -peer port, which, as you can guess from the name, is used by your client to talk to other clients. So we're going to do this the same way that we did the name changes back in the last video. So I need my trusty friend, the terminal, and my other trusty friend, the cheat sheet. And these are what we're going to use. I'm just going to copy them right now. Same thing as before. This is what we were looking for. This is what it's going to be replaced with. So this is Litecoin's peer-to-peer -peer port 9333. I'm going to make mine 2333. Uh, of course, you can make this whatever you like, so long as it's a valid port. And then this is Litecoin's RPC port, and this is going to be mine. Uh, also note that there are testnet counterparts to these. Uh, they're the same things, but there's a one in the front. I don't have to account for them here because these commands will actually do it for me. So, for example, my peer-to-peer -peer port is going to be 12333. I'm going to just navigate on over to my coins directory. I'm going to enter it in here. And it's going to go at it. Uh, also, if you're wondering whether or not you know the, uh, these strings of numbers appear anywhere else in the code, I looked. They only appear with respect to ports, so you're not going to break anything by entering this, which is always good. And moving on, the next thing we're going to do is change the public address identifier. Now, you may have noticed that all Bitcoin addresses start with a 1, and similarly, all Litecoin addresses start with a capital L. That is by design, and it is very, very easy to change, so I figure why not change it ourselves. So we're going to go into our coins directory. We're going to go to SRC uh, base58.h, and we want to go to line number... Uh, 275. Oops, here we are. Uh, obviously, this is wrong on account of the renaming, but uh, this is the magic number right here. This corresponds to a uh, capital L, but and I want I, I want Funcoin's addresses to start with a capital F, so I'm going to make that a 35. That corresponds to capital F, and you're probably wondering how I got that number. Well, there is a very handy table on the Bitcoin Wiki, which I will link to. That contains a list of these numbers and what characters they correspond to. And that's where I got 35 from. And uh, this one right here, this is the testnet identifier. I want it to be 95 for lowercase f. There we go, done. Uh, you don't have to worry about these two guys right here. We're not going to change them. We're going to save that. We're good to go. The next thing we're going to do is handle your coins alert net. And while we're at it, we're going to do the Genesis hex. Now, the uh, alert system is kind of interesting, actually. It was deprecated in Bitcoin. I'm fairly certain it's still active in Litecoin. It's definitely active in this version. Um, and what it is, is, is it allows you to submit a private key, and it will broadcast a network-wide alert. So and that usually means that um, if you're using the graphical client, you'll get an, an, anno an annoying banner. It says, oh, an alert's been triggered. Update your, your client or whatever. Um, we're changing it because there is a chance that the Litecoin alert will reach you and you'll get a, a silly banner across your clan. We don't want that, so we're going to change the keys ourselves for good measure. So I'm going to navigate back a directory <clears throat> and go back to my glorious cheat sheet. And these are what I'm going to use to generate my key pairs. And just like last time, I'll make a paste bin thing. I'll put this in here so you guys can just copy and paste the commands into the terminal from the VM and go on and paste them in. And I've generated all of my key pairs. So, for example, if I wanted to see the main net alert key, I would do this, cat alert key dot hex. And there it is. And we want the public one. But now you're probably wondering, where do I put this in? I'm going to go to alert.cpp. I'm going to make this full screen for a second. And these are the keys. This is the uh, this one's the main net one. This one's the test net one. Uh, I, I have actually already done the main net key and my Genesis hex off screen. One, because they're tedious, and two, you don't need to know my private keys. But just to avoid confusion, I am going to do the test net key here. So I want the test net one. I do cat testnet alert.hex, and there it is. Uh, and just be warned, this is a little tedious, so bear with me. I'm going to delete this. Poof, it's gone. And one line by, you know, one by one, I'm going to take this line copy it <clears throat> and I'm gonna paste it now I'm gonna delete that colon delete that colon too. delete that one as well that one too I hate colons today they can all just go get deleted <sighs> so much fun and that's one out of five lines done now yeah I gotta do that for all of these so I take the next line 
and I put it right after the last one. Delete, 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 oh, no, no, yeah, be careful, delete, delete, I'm getting an itch in my throat, and I gotta keep going, sorry, <laughs> sorry guys, like I said, I want to avoid confusion, so I'm gonna do all these, moving on to the third line, and paste yet again, delete, 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 I'm having so much fun right now, I'm sure you're, you're enjoying the clickety-clack of my keyboard, even though it's not even mechanical, I'm, 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 granted, I'm sure a mechanical keyboard slob could have known that, it's just a simple membrane keyboard, I, I'm a heathen, I know, but fourth line, there we go, delete, 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 okay, and then, the finale, this line here, even though, yes, you need this one too, even though it's not even a full line. Paste it on at the end. Delete, 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 and delete. And there we go, I am done. Now, I know I've done it right because these are the same length, so I, I didn't make a typo in it. Uh, if, you know, you, you finish and they're not the same length, that means you've screwed up somewhere. You should uh, delete it and try again. Yeah, I know it's, there's... Plenty of room for you to make a mistake, so just be careful. I'm going to save this. And as I said, we're doing three hexes. The last one you can read by doing cat genesis hex or genesis coinbase dot hex. There we are. And it's the same exact thing, but this one is uh, not an alert key. It's for your genesis block. We're going to do it now. So we're going to go to our coin again. And we're going to go to main dot cpp. And we're going to go to line number... 27.94 and uh, it's not the exact line but this is it you notice it's the same thing and you're going to enter the same exact way uh, that you did the alert keys and you know, as I said I did this one already I'm not going to do it again I'm sure you guys don't want to see me go through that again so I will leave it to you to enter this one okay and the next thing that we're going to be handling is the pure magic now, pure magic is very important. Uh, it's what's going to prevent your coin from connecting to other networks. For example, it will prevent you from, or your coin from trying to connect to the Litecoin network. So I actually, I probably should not have closed main.cpp because that's um, that's where where it is. So we're gonna do the test net first. So we wanna go to line number, actually it's just up here. Line number, the first one is at 27.45. And these are the pure magic bytes. Now you notice these are hexadecimal numbers. If you don't know what a hexadecimal number is, I suggest you Google it. They're not super difficult to understand. And we're just going to change them randomly. Uh, you probably want to leave the um, first digits the way they are. You'll notice that um, for a two-digit hexadecimal number, they're relatively high. That's on purpose. So I'm just going to change these guys. So F1 will become FC. C1 will become C2. B7 will become uh, B6. And DC will become D2. Now that was completely random on my part. And you can do the same. I'm gonna save. Uh, actually, yeah. I, now we have to do the uh, the main net ones. And that is at line 3082. Here they are. Uh, you'll, yeah, you notice um, this is for Litecoin. Obviously, they're they're changed by adding two to Bitcoin's uh, bytes. But yeah, same thing, different format. So I'm gonna make FB. Uh, let's see, I don't know, uh, FA, C0, C3, B6, BA, and DB, D3. And there we go. Just like that, the pure magic is done. Now, there's one more thing we're going to do, and we're, that is deleting all of the uh, hard-coded network information. So there are uh, two things we're going to be deleting, and those are the seed nodes and the hard-coded IP addresses. Now, when a uh, Litecoin client comes online for the first time, it does not have a list of peers that it knows to connect to. It does, however, have um, some options built into it, and those are the DNS seeds and hard-coded IP addresses. Now, DNS seeds are actually cool little servers that, when the client tries to talk to them, they resolve to a list of active nodes that it can connect to. That's the first thing it tries. And then the second thing it tries is actually a large list of hard-coded IP addresses to connect to. So we're going to go do those now. I'm going to get out of full screen for a moment. 
and we're going to net.cpp. There it is. I'm going to go back to full screen. And line number, what was it? It was uh, 1190, or no, I'm sorry, 1178. Yep, and here they are. Uh, you notice these are supposed to be Litecoin, but they all got changed when I did the renaming. So I'm going to just do this. Leave the uh, last entry with the, uh, the, leave the null entry in there, that's important. And do the same for the test net. Just like that. And we're going to scroll down a little bit. And we will know yep, there it is. These are all of the hard coded IP addresses. And as you can tell, there are a lot of them. So we are going to delete all of them. Scroll down. This is so much fun. Down, down, down. There we are. And delete. That's a little disorienting. Scroll back up. Uh, we can't leave it empty because that'll create a compiling error. So we're just going to enter 0x0, just like that, and save. And now uh, when you start up your coin for the first time, it's not going to try to connect to the Litecoin network. Of course, even if it did, we changed the PM magic, so it wouldn't worry. But one last thing to worry about. All right, that wraps it up for this video. And the next one, we're going to get into the really fun stuff, which is uh, changing the blockchain parameters. That should be a good time indeed. I will see you then.